All praises to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everyone joining me on this program. This is the Fountain of Israel's Bible Studies program, and as always, it's an honor for me to stand before you on the Lord's Holy Sabbath day. And with that, we're going to go ahead and jump into our lesson, which is entitled Probation Period, God's Cutoff Point. Okay, probation period, God's cutoff point. And I want to do this one because a lot of times we uh, feel, or there's some people out there who feel that, well, as long as, well, you can do whatever you want, right? You can do this, whatever you want, as long as you just repent, you know, you'll be okay. Well, you know, the Bible doesn't always speak that way. Sometimes people uh, are cut off before they even uh, breathe. Right. So, I mean, before they even let me say that again, um, they cut off before they even stop breathing. Right. I should say before they even die. Some people are just dead men walking and dead women walking. Right. And these are the unrepentant souls. These are the people who really don't care. They have no more conscious of sin. OK, they just 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 do whatever they want. You've probably seen some where they would uh, they're, they're in the faith. Right. The end of faith. Hey, we're Israelites. Hey, we're supposed to keep the Sabbath. Hey, we're supposed to get back in the covenant. Hey, you know, uh, follow the Messiah, you know, all that stuff. Right. And then they walk away or they act like they don't know. OK, they act like they don't know any better. They just do their own thing. They do what they want to do. Right. And a lot of times, hey, the Most High has given up on people. He really does. I mean, let's not get caught up and get confused. Oh, his mercy endure forever and all that. No, there are times where he will cut you off, meaning he already, he's done with you. He's no, you're not going to change your mind. You're not going to do anything different. You're still going to just do what you want to do. That is it. OK, it is over. OK, there's times where he said, I'm, I'm no, I'm not going to strive with man any longer. Right. We'll, we'll go into that. We're going to go into some different places in the Bible where he just said, when he said, he's just done. I don't want to hear from you. I don't want a prayer from you. I don't want to sacrifice from you. Don't pray for this prayer. No, I don't want none of this. Okay. I'm done. Okay. And some, in some cases, some people, you know, died and, you know, and some people, they were just dead men walking, right? They're just dead people walking. They're just a walking dead, walking around with no relationship, you know, with the most high. He just cut you off. He's just done. OK, that happens and we have to accept that reality. We have to we really do. Sometimes it sounds really harsh and it sounds bad. But hey, you know, it is what it is. OK, it is what it is. At some point, he give you some time. That's what grace is. He give you some time. But when the grace period is over, when probation is over, it's it. You're done. And we and we really have to get that into, you know, our soul. you know what? Well, you know, I think I'm going to get right, you know, right before I die. Well, when is that? How, how do you know when you're going to? You see the absurdity of it all. So we, we really got to get this thing down. We really got to get a handle on this thing and understand that we do way more playing with the most high than he does with us. OK, we, we, we are we play way too many games where he is not even playing. OK, so we, we, we got to get this right. All right. So just talk about people, you know, who just know better. And he just he just done people who just go back to their old ways. They know better. They tasted it and they go back to their old ways. Like the proverb said, you know, and a dog returned to, you know. So let's go ahead and go to Genesis chapter six. We're going to look at a couple things right here. OK. First time when he just start cutting people off back in Genesis six. And I'm going to read over, uh, I'm starting at 6 and 6. That's where I'll start. 6 and 6. And look what he says right here. 6 and 6, uh, Genesis. He said, And he repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it, and it grieved him at his heart. Okay, so it, he was affected deeply, right? <clears throat> In verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and of creeping things, and the fowls of the air. For it repented me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth was corrupt before the God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, and all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And in 13, he said, And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Right. So let's just go 
go back where he started giving just a probation period, right? Let's just go back to that. He just gave a probation period and said, look, I'm done. Okay, this is all this is all it's going to be. Go back to uh, verse three, Genesis six, verse three. And it says, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that. He also is flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Right. So we know right there, you know, it's, hey, it's going to be a hundred and twenty years. Now, I know we attribute it, you know, to age and all that. Say, so, hey, we're just going to, you know live like 120 years and stuff like that right but they, they could also have 120 years of warning okay of, 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 for the ark and everything right now we know uh noah lived like a long time okay but there's a pit a, a period right where he just said you know what <clears throat> because people are different ages right we know that some people live way beyond 120 okay before the flood okay after the flood the, the numbers start going down lower and lower and lower and lower so yeah it does you know attribute to the age too but you can also say okay for a long time for 120 years of preaching up into the ark to the doors are closed okay he been preaching hey man the lord is gonna you know and what what people were doing just like it says in the new testament in the renewed covenant it says that you know people were just being married in the days of noah people were just marry and married and giving in marriage just doing all their thing until the ark you know show up now the whole time it says you know noah was a preacher of righteousness right so he just kept preaching and saying, hey, look, the Lord's going to destroy the earth if you don't act right. OK, the Lord's going to destroy the earth if you don't obey him. OK, and people just doing what they want to do. They just like, well, whatever, you know, is whatever. And just did just did what they wanted to do. Violent and wicked and lustful and all, all those type of things. Right. Until that ark door closed. Probation was closed at that point. That was it was it for all, all flesh. Right. Except Noah and his family. Right. So that was it, except for everybody, everybody and everything on the ark. That was it. Other than that, it, it was over. Probation was closed. Now, for that whole for that whole time up until the ark closed, everybody was pretty much walking dead. Right. Right. Class. I mean, everyone was it, it was done because it because they because they were not going to change their ways. They're not going to repent. They're going to still do what they wanted to do. Right. So we just got to keep that in mind. OK, as we go through some of these scriptures here. OK. Let's take a look over here at uh, Romans. Okay, let's go over here to Romans real quick. So I want to go to Romans and I'm going to go chapter one in Romans. I'm going to start at 24, 24 to 32, right? 24, 32, 24 says, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served creature more than a creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of a woman, burned in their lusts one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was meat, right? So we're talking about all the way back, so Sodom, Gomorrah, and all that, right? 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, so they just ignored God. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Okay, he gave up on it. He gave them up to their own lust. He gave them up to a reprobate mind. Look, look what we're saying. To do those things which are not convenient, doing the things that they should not be doing, right? Okay, uh, <clears throat> 29. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that which they, they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So, you know, like misery loves company, evil loves company. So those, not only did they do all these things as named, been all this, um, this, this 
this envy and murder and debate and deceit and malignity and whispering and backbiting and hating God and proud and boasters and inventors of evil things and disobedient parents and all that other stuff. So you notice how when you get more and more people to sign up for, you know what I'm saying? That's that's what it is. It's like it's like a small fire growing into a bigger fire, right? So people doing evil, oh, they 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 love to recruit other people. Okay? People hate God, want to be disobedient. They like to recruit other people. Okay? They like co-conspirators. They like people to go in with them. It feels a little bit better. Okay? It feels like, eh, okay, well, you know, that, that that's it, right? So that's the kind of thing that, you know, we're looking at. You want to join into that, and you can do that only for so long before the Most High cut you off. You can do that only for so long. And people want company. They want they want to do that. They want company when they're doing evil like this. And it says here, and two different but he gave them up. Okay. He said, Wherefore in 24, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. Okay. Gave them up. So okay, they you want to uh, you know what? You want to do evil? Go ahead. Go ahead. Just you know what? That's it. I'm done. That I mean, that's how the most people keep th they keep thinking that he won't do that. And I'm not sure why why you think he won't do that. OK, we know at the end, some people, for instance, will go into the lake of fire. Right. It's something he gave up on them. Right. Or or they gave up on God. and He gave up on them. OK. And people say, oh, well, he'll never leave and forsake you. If you don't forsake him, if you don't leave him, if you don't get out of the uh, covenant. No, he'll never leave you forsake. He has a covenant with you. He'll never leave you forsake you as long as you keep your end of the deal. He keeps his end of the deal as long as you keep your end of the deal. We keep think we keep making this a one way relationship. We keep making it like that. And it, it, it doesn't work like that, brothers and sisters. It doesn't. We are there are certain things we are required. There's some things that the most high and the Messiah requires of us. Or we will be cut off or he will give up on you. He's done. He's, he's he throws up his hand and it's over. We're going to keep looking at that, right? Okay, Roman, uh, look at, look at, uh, let's go 18 and 23, give you an idea, right? It says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of man, right? I'm in Romans uh, 1, right? I'm in 18. And all un, uh, and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. All right. So now we're talking about people, you know, they know better because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Right. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. We get a lot of that today and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like the corruption, corruptible man. And to birds and the four-legged beasts and the creeping things. This is this is when they start getting into idolatry. They start creating their own gods, right? When they, when you know better, when the God has shown you, okay, when you tasted you tasted the goodness that is God, and then you still go after these other gods. You're still doing all this idol worshiping, okay? You're still worshiping the Most High God of Heaven, the Ancient of Days, the Messiah. Okay, and no, the ancient of days is the father and the Messiah is the son. But you you trying to worship them just like you worship them when you were Christian or when you were of some other religion or something like that. Doesn't work like that. Doesn't work like that. Okay, but this is talking about like, you know, when they go into idolatry and they start making idols, you know, made by hands and things like that and worshiping that, worshiping wood and stone. That, that, that's what they want to do. And after so long, he's only going to tolerate that for so long. Let me I'm just telling you right now. OK, let's just get that straight. Let's get that out the way. He's only going to do that for so long. At some point, probation is over. In other words, grace is over. OK, that is it. OK, so at some point, you don't want to have anything to do with him. After a while, he's not going to want to have anything to do with you. Let's just let's just keep it like it is. OK. Because a lot of times we want to wait up to the last second and then we want to repent. Well, you can't time that. You, 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 you can't do that. When are you supposed to repent? At the warning. 
When you when you have that warning, when you have that unction of the spirit, when you have that little nudging, that little thing, that little voice in your head that says, little voice in your spirit that says, no, we shouldn't be doing that. No, this displeases the Father. No, no, no. You know, the Most High is watching. No, 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 no. This dishonors the Messiah. This spits in the face of his sacrifice. Oh, what am I doing right now is a stench in his nostrils. When you lose that, he's, he's pretty much giving up on you at that point. When you lose that, when you have no more consciousness of sin, when you just don't care anymore, he's pretty much giving up on you. Now, could that change? Hey, that is up. That is up to the Messiah. OK, that is, that is completely up to them. But I'm just showing you the fruit of them who they're just walking dead. I'm just, I'm just showing you that they, they know better, but they will not do better. And then they have no consciousness of they, they they don't care they don't care they're like well whatever you know I had a brother in the ministry I told you guys years and years ago was in it doing his thing you know, you know reading I mean the whole thing and it just completely walked away until not not only I mean with me for years right and then completely went atheist and then start to be disrespectful and you know calling those high sky daddy and all that other stuff I mean just completely just went off the rails and just don't now one day will he turn around and 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 return back to you know the most high and get back into the covenant i don't know because i don't communicate with him but he could he could but as it stands right now mocking him and insulting oh there ain't no sky daddy's coming to you and there's nobody this and that you are god you are the universe the universe is in you and all this other stuff the stuff that he started talking about uh, years ago and all that if he's still on that type of time then yeah, he's cut off. He's walking dead. He's he's, he's cut off. He's done with it. Nobody's coming back to save you and all these little things that you know, little jabs that he was taking and stuff like that. You know, I I just stopped dealing with. It. I'm like, all right, well, you know, hey, it is what it is. You know, you you know the scriptures because we like I said we were doing it together for years. So there's no sense of me reciting scriptures for you when we study back and forth all the time. You read for me for a while. I mean. You know, so that that's what I'm talking about. So people like that, I'm not condemning him. I'm just saying if he still has that same spirit, then the most high's done with him already. We got we gotta keep that in mind. All right, so let's 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 just keep going. We're gonna look at a couple of uh a uh, uh, couple of scriptures that suggest hey, the Lord is pretty much done. Okay, let's go to Hosea. Let me just read one verse, nine and seventeen. Let's go to Hosea real quick, nine and seventeen. Okay, 9. 17 says, My God will cast them away because they did not hearken unto him, and they shall be wanderers among the nations. Okay, cast them away. Want, now, they're, they're still alive. He cast them away. He ain't had nothing to do with them. You read the whole thing. He, he ain't gonna have, he's oh, like, okay, I'm done. You're just going to be wandering out there. You won't have a God. You won't have me to guide you. You won't have me to help you. I'm, I'm pretty much done with you. OK, I mean, that's just a just a little example. Right. Then if you're just prideful and you don't want to, you know, you really don't want to listen. Let's go on over to Deuteronomy. Uh, Deuteronomy 32. OK, and then we're going to read 15 through 18 of Deuteronomy 32, 15 through 18. OK, it says, but Jeshurun wax fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations, and provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils and not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up whom your father feared not. Like your father didn't know anything about that. Verse 18. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful and has forgotten God that formed thee. Right? So this particular, so Jeshurun, I mean, he waxed fat. I mean, you know, he got prideful. He got the big head, you know. He, he was doing, he was prospering. He was doing his thing and everything was good. And when things get good, you forgot about God. Now nah, it wasn't this God. Oh, it's, it's, it's this other God. 
the guy you want to fashion in your own mind, the guy you want to fashion with your own hands. See, things like this can get you cut off. Things like this is when the Most High will give up on you. <coughs> okay, this is the kind of things that we have to look out for. Being prideful. These are the things that will the book of you, you know your probation. This is when it's over. It's done. It's over. Because you have people, they will walk away from it or whatever, and then they'll go back to someone who they feel is close to God or their faith is strong or something like that. Hey, pray for me. And I'm not saying anytime someone say pray for you is because, of, no, it's not that, you know, it's not always that. I'm talking about someone who's walked away from the faith, walked away and returned to their old life and started doing what they've been doing, okay, what they were doing before, okay? Before coming into the truth, they just went back to that, right? And then after so long, they see you and they're like, hey, you know, just because <clears throat> you pray for me because, you know, and all that. Okay, they, why? They don't feel close to God. They don't feel connected. They feel cut off. They feel like probation is closed. Keep that in mind, brothers and sisters. Let's, let's, let's just keep that in mind as we go through this, right? So, <clears throat> We go Exodus 22. Okay, I'm just going to read a little bit there. Exodus chapter 22. Dealing a little bit with, you know, this idolatry and stuff. This is that's one way right there to get you cut off right there. 22 and 20. And he says, and he that sacrifice unto any God, save unto the Lord only. He shall be utterly destroyed. Okay, <laughs> you're done. Now we know that in some instances, someone would go sacrifice to another god and they get killed. Period. Right? And then some of them, the god cuts you off. Now they're still walking around and breathing, but the Lord don't want to have nothing to do with them. He, he's done with them. I, I don't want your sacrifices. I don't want your prayers. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want anything from you. Okay. Cut off, walking dead, probation closed. See, we're talking about when God has reached his cutoff point, when the most high Yah has reached his cutoff point, when he is done with you. We have to be careful about that. We have to be serious and sober minded about something like that. We have to be serious and sober minded about that. OK, so let's go ahead. Let's let's continue. OK. Let's continue. <clears throat> I want to go a couple of places, give you an idea. A couple of places over in, let's start in Isaiah and then we'll go to uh, Jeremiah, right? So let's go to Isaiah first. We're going to go to Isaiah 47. Isaiah 47. And I'm going to read verse... 11. Okay, so when he gives when he gives up on you, verse 11 says, Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Okay, so he's just saying, you know, when all these crazy, weird things are starting to happen. When these things that seems inexplicable to you, you're like, man, what is going on? You know, you, you, you need to take inventory at that point. You need to, uh, am I, be, am I cut off? I mean, and you know, is, is most high not dealing with me? You, we, you need to walk around circumspect at that time. You need to wonder, are, 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 are you still in covenant with them? Are you still in the good graces? Is, 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 is probation cut off from you? We need to keep that in mind all the time. Okay? Even even what? Even Paul said, you know, I got to keep myself in subjection unless I be a cast off. And it doesn't mean that you've physically died. You could just be walking dead. Okay? So, we're going to go uh, Isaiah. We're still in Isaiah, but let's go Isaiah 59 and 2. Isaiah 59 and verse 2. He says, what? Now, now, now look at what he says. He says, but your iniquities 
have separ separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Look, look at what he says. Because your iniquity and your sins, because you just are steeped in that, because you're just dripping in it, because you won't repent, because you just won't put away your sins. Because you won't turn from your sins and walk in a way you should go, because you won't do that. It has separated you from the Most High. It has removed you, removed you from the covenant of the Messiah. It, it, it's, it's done. This, this is how you will know, right? This is how you will know. So I, I'm preaching this to you so that you can be careful, that you can be circumspect, right? So you can consider. Okay, so, let, you know, let's get into some examples here in just a second. Now watch this. We're going we're gonna to get into a couple of examples. In Jeremiah, because I said we we're going to do that. Okay, just the next book over. I'm going to look into a couple examples real quick. So I want to go to Jeremiah chapter 7. Let's look at this. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 7. We're going to go to a couple of places in Jeremiah. I want to show you something. So stay with me, class, so we can take a look at this real quick. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 7. Now, I'm going to start at uh, verse 1 and 2. Now, watch this. In Jeremiah 7, 1 and 2, and it says, And the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house, and proclaim there this word, and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah, that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord, right? So we have that. Now, I'm going to drop down to uh, 14 and read 14 to 16, right? And 14, it says, Therefore, Will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. Okay. <clears throat> and then he said 15. And I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry a cry nor prayer for them neither make intercession to me for i will not hear thee what is he he's saying this to jeremiah he said don't don't pray for them don't cry for them don't offer supplication don't do anything i won't hear these people i, I won't hear you because jeremiah you know being a good prophet wants to intercede wants to save his people okay but he said you know what the most High said no i don't want i, I don't want to hear don't do it i don't want to hear it i'm not listening so some of them got cut off. Some of them were walking dead, right? Right. So the probate, it's over. I'm done. When, 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 when the Lord stopped dealing with you, okay, it's done. It, I mean, it, it's, it's just a, it's a, it's a done deal, right? Now, again, can that change at some point in the future? Could, could that change? It could. It could. I suppose it could. But do you really want to take the risk and walk away? Because even the scripture says, you know, those who know and tasted this goodness and then walk away, it's better that they never knew at all. Right. So do you want to take the risk? Because I, I know I know the Messiah is able. I know that I, I know. But do you want to take the risk? If you know better, you really want to know better and then you want to just walk away and do what you want for a little bit and then and, and bet everything. He bet, bet your salvation that you can come back. I, I don't know. If you, you want to risk it, that's on you. I would advise you not to risk it. OK, that's on you. But look, look don't don't even pray for them. Don't just leave them. Don't even pray. I don't want to hear it. Don't even pray for them, okay? But we're not done. We're going to read a little bit more, okay? Let's go to chapter 11. Watch this. Jeremiah. We're going to go to 11. Go to 11, 11. We're going to read 11, 11 through 14, right? 11, 11. It says, Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them, and I will not listen to them. They're going to cry to, and I won't listen. 
And then shall the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto the gods unto whom they offer incense, but they shall not save them at all in the time of their trouble. I'm going to have you cry. You, you, you know, you're going to cry to these other gods. You're going to cry to these fake gods, but they're not going to be able to save you. They're not going to be able to do anything to you. First of all, you're going to cry to me. I'm not going to hear you. Then you're going to cry to your dumb idols and they're not going to hear you. They're not going to be able to do anything for you. Right? And in 13, say, for according to the number of thy cities were thy gods. So you had a bunch of these false gods, right? Oh, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem, have you set up altars to, to that shameful thing. Talking about, talking about those idols. Even altars to burn incense unto Baal. Okay, worrying about all these other idols and these other gods. You got a bunch of high places. You got a bunch of uh, altars. You said you're burning a whole lot of incense to all these other gods. And somewhere in the midst of that, you're going to be like, you know what? Maybe we should serve, you know, the God of our fathers. And he's like, oh, no, 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 I don't want to hear it. Don't even do it. Verse 14. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them. For I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. Does this not sound like at that time, he, he just, uh, I don't want to hear it. I give up. Done. It sounded like probation is closed, right? I'm done. He's telling the prophet, he's telling Jeremiah, don't even pray for him. It's over for him. I'm done with him. Brother, sister, I mean, you, you, you really want to take that chance? You really want to risk that probate? You really want to risk it? I told you we play we play we play with the most high and the Messiah way more than he plays with us. Way more. Let's keep let's keep that in mind, right? I'm gonna go to 14, Jeremiah 14. Let's go to chapter 14, right? We're gonna read uh 14, 10 and 11. He says, What? In verse 10 he says, Thus says the Lord unto this people, thus have they loved to wander. They have not refrained their feet. Therefore, the Lord does not accept them. He will not remember. He will now remember their iniquity and visit their sins. OK, the 11. Then said the Lord unto me, pray not for this people for their good. Don't pray for them. I don't want to hear. Tell Jeremiah again, don't pray for leave. Don't even worry about it. I, I'm, I don't hear. I, I don't hear that. I don't want to hear the prayer of them. Don't pray for them. And the prophets, plenty of time, what they, they want to intercede, okay? It's just like when Moses, he wanted to step in and like kill me, God, instead of killing them, want to intercede. And God's like, nope, don't want to do it. I'm not going to kill you for them, right? Even Paul, he was like, um, I would that I would, you know, <laughs> you know, sacrifice himself for the, you know, for the people. It's like, I might, you know, he, he was, he was close to pulling what, you know, what Moses was trying to do. And, you know, the Lord's like, no, no, no. Is it, it's just, it, it, it's over. You, you remember Korah and his troop, he was done playing. They, they want to go there and test Moses and all that. And they didn't even know that the, that, that the earth was going to swallow them up. They didn't know probation was closed. They didn't know that upset, you know, touch not God's anointing, right? That challenging Moses at every step and trying to recruit people under you and all that and get people to follow you and all that. They didn't know how close they were to death. They did not know. I believe had, had they known, it's just my opinion, but I believe had they known, they would have humbled themselves. I'm they'd be like, you know what? Yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm cool. I'm, you know. I don't, I don't want, you know, get swallowed. I don't want the earth to open up, swallow me and my family and all the troops and everything. I don't know. You know, they didn't know exactly when probation was going to get cut off. None of us do. Like I said, sometimes you saw people in the, uh, in the, in the, in the Bible, they got judgment right away. Sometimes you get judgment later, but you're just a walking dead. They say, you know what? It's not your time, but I'm done with you. Let's go ahead. I mean, let's let's look at this, brothers and sisters. We got we got to look at this. So you know what? 15. We go Jeremiah 15, 6 and 8, right? Jeremiah. A little bit more Jeremiah. It says, thou has forsaken me, says the Lord. Thou art going backwards. OK, so you went away from the Lord, right? 
Therefore, will I stretch out my hand against thee and destroy thee. I am weary with repenting. I am so tired of you back and forth. Look at look, look, look at Judges. Look at the various chapters of Judges. Oh, they went and they and they and Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And he went a whoring after all these other gods. And then all of a sudden they cry out to God, save us. We're sorry. We won't do it anymore. Next chapter, they do the same thing. Next chapter, they do the same thing. Then, then God sends a judge, sends a deliverer, saves them. And then as soon as they, things start to go well again, then they forget about God. They serve another God. And same thing here. I, I, I'm, weird. I'm, I'm so sick and tired of your repenting over and over and over of the same thing. Okay, I, I'm sick and so I'm so sick and tired because over the judges, they're repenting. Okay, their repenting was the same. It was idolatry. Idolatry. Okay, we ain't gonna serve another god. And then the next thing you know, when things are going fine, they serve another god. And then the enemies start um, uh, uh, winning battles over them and start to, you know, uh, oppress them and overpower them. And then they cry out to the true and living. And then he sends them a judge and deliver them out of their calamity again. And then they go back to worshiping other God. I'm so like right here. Verse six. I'm so weary. We're I'm so tired of your repenting. You keep saying you're going to do this. You keep saying you're not going to do idolatry, but you keep you, you keep doing it over and over. See, you can't just keep doing the exact same thing over and over and over and over and over. And then just repent. You, you, I mean, you don't have forever. You, you don't have forever. And, and we should be that much more sober in mind when we realize we don't know When's the cutoff point? We, we, we should think about that. When, when we don't know the cutoff point, we have to consider. We have to, you know, we have to take a second look. We have to, you know, I better quit tempting fate. And you know what I mean by that. I, bet I, I probably should stop playing games. See, the one that overcomes is the same one that'll be saved. You have to overcome and endure until the end. You have to. This is a fight. This is a fight, brothers and sisters. I mean, let's let, let, let's keep going. Let's keep going. OK, we did a whole lot of, you know, Jeremiah. Look at Proverbs six. Let's go back here. Go back a couple of books. Proverbs uh, chapter six. We're going to read um, 14, 14 and 15 of Proverbs, which says forwardness. Uh, let's see. Forwardness is in, a, is in his heart. He devises mischief continually. He soweth discord. Therefore, shall his calamity come suddenly and suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. Now, this is a person who is already uh, uh, mischievous continually, always just living what he wants to do and what he want to do, just living crazy, right? Just, 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 just wilding out, right? And then suddenly he's going to meet his end. He don't know when it's coming, but he, he'll meet his end, right? Just somebody just do what they want to do. You, you never know when you're going to get cut off. We're going to continue. Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24. Okay, and then in 24, I'm going to read 20 to 22. It says, For there shall be no reward to the evil man, and the candle of the wicked shall be put out. Okay, let's just cut off. It's just over. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king and meddle not with them that are given to change. Okay, don't don't even deal with these people. Right. For their calamity shall rise suddenly. And who know the ruin of them both? Who, who knows when it's going to happen? Who, who knows when it's going to happen? Don't worry about, you know, people, they, you know, they, they know better. Right. And they don't want to do right. And, you know, just, hey, let. At a distance, you say, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to get caught up in what they're doing. OK, because I, I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what the most high have planned for them. You know, they don't want to you know, they, they don't want to walk. They don't want to be obedient. They don't want to walk in righteousness. Hey, then I'm just going to keep my distance. 
And, I, and that's really the attitude you should have because you just never know. And you don't want to get caught up in their stuff because we can, you can get caught up in, in stuff, right? You can get caught up in it. Okay, somebody else's probation closes and then you can get caught up in it. Okay, just like uh, Cora, right? And all the people that follow them and then in their families and all that, boom, gone, right? Then you have all those uh, co-conspirators who are trying to conspire against Daniel, get him tossed in a line did, right? And then he's okay. He comes out all right. And then all of them, all those all those wise people, they get tossed in the lines. In, and then guess what? They grabbed up their family, their, 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 their wives and their children. Grab them up, toss them into. And the wives and children didn't do anything. But they got caught up in that. You see what I'm saying? So sometimes you got to keep your distance from people who just don't, they don't want to get right. They, they don't want to. You just keep your distance. I'm, I'm talking about that work. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about, you know, you work because you're only there for X amount of time, right? I'm there for six, seven, eight while, you know, you don't have a fellowship with them. You just, I'm working, I'm punching in, I'm punching out, it's over, okay? That's it, right? That's it. That, that's different, okay? You got to keep your difference, distance in that instance. But I'm talking about in fellowship, hanging out, your own free time, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you can do what you want, but I'm just saying, right? So... Uh, Proverbs 29 and 1, okay? I'm going to finish up in Proverbs. Let's go 29 and 1. And it says, He that being often reproved harden his necks, they don't want to listen, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Nothing you can do about it. He keeps on getting proved, keeps trying to get corrected, keeps trying to, you know, keeps getting tested, he's, and he's, it's not working. He gets stiff neck. I don't, yeah, no, I don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear what you have to say. Don't want to hear what this says the Lord. Don't want to hear, hey, things that they know that which is good. They don't want to hear it. Shall suddenly be destroyed and without remedy. It's, it's over and that's it. It's done. Right? But let's get into some examples, right? Let's get into some examples. We're going to go ahead and get into uh, 1 Samuel, right? Let's do, let's do that. That way... We get some examples. We look at uh, King Saul and he didn't want to, you know, he wanted to do what he wants to do. Right. And we go, and we all know the result of that. But let's let's examine it, though. First Samuel 13. We're going to at least examine it, though. Let's go back to the scriptures and we're going to examine it. OK, first Samuel 13. I'm going to pick it up at verse eight. First Samuel 13 and verse eight. And it says, and he talking about Saul and he tarried seven, seven days according to. To the, to the set time that Samuel had appointed. He told Saul, stay here for seven days, right? But Samuel could not, uh, could not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him, right? And Saul said, bring hither a burnt offering to me and peace offering. And he offered the burnt offering, okay? So Saul took it upon himself, and he just made himself a priest, right? He's already king, but he made himself a priest, right? And then, and then 10, and it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of the offering, the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him that he might salute him. OK, so he went out there to greet him. OK, and 11 and Samuel said, what hast thou done? And Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me and that thou camest not within the days appointed and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mish Michmash. Therefore, said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. 13. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon for, uh, Israel forever. But now. Thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord had commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou has not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Okay? So right there, Saul, now Saul continued to rule a little longer, right? But at that point, he used to walk in dead. That was it. At that point, you didn't want to obey. You didn't want to do what, what I commanded you to do. You didn't want to do what the Lord commanded you to do. And you took it upon yourself. You're already king. 
And I was going to, and, and, and the Lord said, look, I, I, I was going to, and he said through the mouth of Samuel, I was going to make you a king, establish your king forever. But since you can't listen to what I'm saying, that's not going to happen. I'm going to cut you off from being a king. In fact, I'm already looking for somebody who's a man after my own heart. I'm already going to do that. And then with him, I'm going to establish the kingdom. Right? But we're not done. We're going to continue. We're going to, look, we're going to look at this a little bit more. So let's go to chapter 15 of 1 Samuel, right? Now we're going to read chapter 15, starting at verse 1. Okay? Chapter 15, starting at verse 1. Let's look at some more, some more of this, okay? Because Saul started messing up early, but let, let's look at some more. Samuel also said unto, we're in 15, verse 1. Samuel also said unto Saul, the Lord sent me to appoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus said the Lord of hosts. I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not. But slay both man and woman, infant and suckling and ox and sheep, camel and ass. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in uh, to lame. Two hundred thousand footmen and ten thousand men of Judah. And Saul came to the city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, go, depart. Get ye down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For ye showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Canaanites departed from among the Amalekites. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until thou comest to Shur. That is over against Egypt. And he said Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep, and of the oxen, and of the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and, ref and, and refused, that they destroyed utterly. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king. Okay, sounds like what he said over in Genesis when he just created man, right? Same thing. And we see what happened with the world then, right? It repented me, me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel and he cried unto the Lord all night. He felt bad. Samuel was a good prophet and he liked Saul. But Saul was hard headed and does what he wants to do. Right. He cried all night. Verse 12. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place and is gone about and passed on and gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleeding of the sheep in my ears and the lowering of the oxen, which I hear? He says, so if you if you did what you said, you supposed, what you were supposed to do. How come I'm hearing uh, sheep and oxen? What, what's going on? Right. In 15. And Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekites for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said unto Saul, stay and I will tell thee what the Lord has said to me this night. And he said unto him, say on. And Samuel said, when thou was little in thy own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Until they're all gone, right? Therefore, then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, 
and have gone the way which the Lord sent me. And I have brought Agag, the king of the Amalekites, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. See, he's not even listening. The Lord said, destroy everything, including the king and all the animals, the men, women, all of them, the sheep, everything, utterly destroy. Get rid of it. And he's still making excuses, right? And 21. But the people took of the spoil, the sheep, the oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gigas. Oh, so now you're lying on the people. Instead of being the king, you're supposed to be the leader and you're the king. So instead of just saying, yeah, I told them to go ahead and keep the best stuff, to keep the good stuff and destroy everything else. No, you just, oh, well, they just went ahead and just, okay. <clears throat> and then 22. And Samuel said, has, has the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams, okay? For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is an iniquity and idolatry because thou has rejected the word of the Lord. He has also rejected thee from being king. So the most high can reject you. He will reject you. Was not Saul the king of Israel? Was he not rejected? He's like, the most high, I'm done with him. Now I reject you. Okay? Now, now it's over. Okay? Modern day, I, mean, I unfriend you. It's over. Block. Right? I mean, come on, people. Let's, let's, let's come on. I mean, this is what's going on here, right? Now, look at uh, 16 and 1, right? Now, watch this. 16 and 1, right? This first Samuel 16 and 1. He says, And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Fill thy horn with oil and go, and I will send thee to Jesse, to Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. I'm done. How long are you for, how long are you gonna cry for this dude? It's over. I'm done with him. How long are you gonna do it? Probation over, brothers and sisters. Done with. Let's just, I mean, at some point, at some point, we're going to get this. At some point. Okay, let's look at a few more places before we close it out. We can go to Amos 5. A few more places. You guys may have a couple of bonus scriptures, which is okay. So Amos 5. And I'm going to read 21 to 23. Amos 5, 21 to 23. And he says, I hate, I despise your feasts. I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs. For I will not hear the melody of thy viols, right? I'm not, I, I don't want to hear it. I'm not even trying to hear any of that stuff y'all trying to do. When you cut off, that is it. There's going to be a time where he is not trying, he's not trying to hear you. Do you want, do you want to take that risk? Because that, that's what's going on here. It's like, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I, I, I can't, I can't with these people anymore, Right? Now, I'm not saying that's all of, you know, Israel right now. I'm not talking about that's you individually right now. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that we all run the risk if we keep playing games. All I'm saying, we all run the risk of being cut off and if we keep playing games. Because we keep thinking, we keep thinking that being cut off means, okay, when you die and you go face judgment. Sometimes you can be cut off and you are alive. Just King Saul was cut off. He was still alive. We know eventually he died, but... When the Lord stopped dealing with him, that's it. He just started going crazy. He started doing all kinds of things. We know later on he went to the witch indoor. Okay, let's just keep. And, we, and you know we're not. He know better. We're not supposed to be dealing with the dead. Don't be dealing with sorcerers and all. And people speak. We're not supposed to do that. He went and did that too. You see what I'm saying? 
Now, a lot of people, they'd be like, well, you know, but, but David, you know, he messed up. He did. Okay, yeah, David did a couple things, but David also repented. David also showed accountability. Okay, every, every, everyone has sinned. Everyone has fell, fall short, right? But David showed, read the Psalms. But David showed some accountability. He said, you know what? My bad, I'm wrong. I sinned. Okay, he had to pay a price and everybody, but he sinned. And we will look at a new, a new Testament. When we look at the chapters in faith. Okay. In Hebrews, we see, David, David is in there. You don't see Saul. You see David. But you don't see Saul, do you? Let's just keep that. Let's just keep it going. Okay. And he says, uh, in 23, he says, Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs. Don't be singing these songs. No, no. Oh, Lord. No, no. Stop it. I, I don't want to hear it. I'm done. This is what that's what it feels like to be cut off. That's what it feels like to be the walking dead when he he's not even trying to hear any of that stuff that we're trying to do, right? Right? Those, that's the kind of thing that we're talking about. Let's go ahead. Uh, let's see here. I had Jeremiah 6 and 20. Okay, let me let me try that one. Jeremiah chapter 6. In verse 20, which reads, To what purpose cometh there to me incense from Sheba and a sweet cane from a far country? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices sweet unto me. That's what it feels like to be the walking dead. Your prayers, they're, they're going unanswered. That's what that that's what it's like. Israel, Israel their history is replete of st things like that. They they are they got plenty of that in their history. Being cut off. Guys, let's let's keep it pushing. Okay, we're going to go a little bit more of um Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 1, okay? Get a little bit more Isaiah. Go back. Okay, Isaiah chapter 1, then we'll move around a little bit. Isaiah 1, I'm going to start at 11. Okay, and he says, what? To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, says the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. When he come to appear before me, who has required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and the Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Okay, this is just when he's getting tired of it. When you're just still doing the same thing, you're still out in the streets going crazy, acting like you don't even know God. And then you want to come in and start offering the sacrifices. Then you want to just do, you know, do you want to, oh, oh, God, oh, Father God. No, no. This, this is him just being fed up, right? And then in 14, he said, your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hate it. They are trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. He's like, I don't, I really don't want to put up with this anymore, right? 15. And when you spread forth your hands, all right, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear your hands are full of blood. When you spread forth your hand, I don't want to hear it. When you make many prayers, I no, no, you, you're full of blood. So you're full of sin. You're full of iniquity. When you do all these, I don't want to hear it. Why? Because before it was time to say, you were going hog wild. You were going crazy. You're doing all kinds of things that you know better than you were willfully sinning. You know from the jump it's not right and you're still doing it. You still did it and then you want to come over here and then you want to offer me a sacrifice. Really? I mean, really? After some time, you have to mature. Okay? It's like what Paul said, you know, hey, when I was a child, I did childish things. So, yeah, some sins, hey, we struggle with. Okay, I get it. I get it. We struggle with it. But after after so long, 
You got to mature past it. After so long, you have to mature past it. You keep on doing the same thing over and over and over and over. And this is the attitude you're going to get from the most high. That, this is the attitude you're going to get from, I don't want to hear it no more. I, 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 no, no. He te- he'll tell the priest, don't even pray. Don't, don't pray for him. I'm, I don't want to hear it. I'm done. I cut him off. I'm done. I, I don't want to hear it. It's over. Right? So the, the, let's just, hey, let's keep looking. Isaiah, let's go to Isaiah 57. Okay. Let's go to chapter 57. Okay, and when I get to 57, I'm going to read 1 through 13. Now watch this. He said, the righteous perish, and no man lay at the heart. And merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. He shall enter into peace, and they shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. But draw near hither. Ye sons of, of, of the sorceress, the seed of the adulterer and the whore. Against whom do you sport yourselves? Against whom ye a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Are ye not children of transgressions, a seed of falsehood? Inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree, slaying the, ch- the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks. Among the smooth stones of the stream is thy portion. They they are thy lot. Even to them has thou poured a drink offering. Thou has offered a meat offering. Should I receive comfort in these? Oft upon a lofty and high mountain has thou set thy bed. Even thither went thou up to offer a sacrifice. So you do what you want to do and then you still offer a sacrifice. Behind the doors also when the post has thou set up thy remembrance. For thou hast discovered thyself to another than me and art gone up. Thou has enlarged thy bed and made thee a covenant with them, talking about idols, other other gods. Thou lovest their bed where thou saw it. it. And thou wentest to the king with ointment and didst increase thou perfumes and did send thy messengers far off and did debase thyself even unto hell. Okay? Thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way, yet said it thou not. There is no hope. Thou hast found the life of thine hand, therefore thou was not grieved. And then and then verse eleven here. And of whom hast thou been afraid or feared that thou hast lied and hast not remembered me, nor laid it to thy heart? Have not I held my peace even of old and thou fearest me not? Like, have I not been patient? Have I, I just, you know, I, I could, there's plenty of times I could have just killed you instantly. So have I been patient with you? Have I not been long suffering with you? Right. Twelve. I will declare thy righteousness and thy works for they shall not profit thee. Yeah, you did a little something, but it doesn't matter. OK. Thirteen. When thou criest. Let thy com- companies deliver thee. All those other idols, all those other gods, all those people who roll with you. Let them deliver you. Okay. But the wind shall carry them all away. Vanity shall take them. But he that put his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. Yeah, you just doing what you want to do. And then you come back and try to offer me a sacrifice. Then you do what you want to do. Then you want to come back and offer me a, a burn offering, a peace offering. A drink offering. You do all that and then you go back and do what you want to do. You so you live what you want and then all of a sudden you want to come and offer me a sacrifice or a peace offering. Some sort of offering or something. No. No, we no, we're not doing that. Um and, and when you were doing all that, I, I held my peace. I, I didn't say anything, I held my peace. But in the end, it's not gonna work for you. See, again, when the probation is cut off, you see, when, it, when, when it's all over, right? We're going we're gonna to finish up and just get a little bit more here and we'll finish up, right? So we're going to read, I'm going to read two more places and then I'm going to go ahead and just end it there, right? So Proverbs, let's go to Proverbs and you guys know this one, right? So we're going to go to Proverbs 28, one verse, 
Here's another example of what he don't want to eat. It, okay, uh, hear it. 28 and then verse 9. It says, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. And he don't want to hear it. Right? So if you don't want to hear the law, he don't want to hear your prayers. It's done. It's over. Don't, don't, don't even worry about it. All right? So let, let's just keep that in mind. Okay, that's one. Let's just let's keep that in mind, right? So let's go ahead and go over here to our last place. We're gonna go over to Lamentations. Okay, chapter three. Okay, and I'm just gonna read 41 and 42. Chapter three, 41 and 42. Okay, and it's, uh, let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens. And we have transgressed and have rebelled. Thou hast not pardoned. And thou hast covered with anger and persecuted us. Thou hast slain. Thou hast not pitied. Right? So, and then it says over in 44, it says, and thou hast covered thyself with a cloud that our prayer should not pass through. That right there, brothers and sisters, that that's that can be pretty rough, right? When he's it's so, so thick a cloud that your prayers cannot even pass through. You know, we heard these expressions say, man, you know, I need somebody who can get a prayer through or whatever, because some prayers can be blocked. Right. If a man is just angry with his wife for no reason and stuff like that, his prayers are hindered. Right. I don't want to hear it. You go make up with your wife before. I don't, I don't even want to hear it. Go make up with your wife first. Right. So there's a lot of ways you can get you can get cut off or the, pro, the probation is over and all that. And, all, you know, it's just. We got to be serious about this. Now, let's go to our last place. Right. John nine. OK. Let's go to John chapter nine. This will be our last spot right here. This is a very serious and weighty matter. So, 9 and verse 31. He says this. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will... Him, he heareth. Let that sink in a little bit. Let's leave that on a, on a high note. You worship him and you do his will, then he hears you. I hope someone has been edified by this lesson. So until next time, search the scriptures and prove all things. Shalom Israel.